Hi, my name is Caitlin Bidell. I'm studying communication sciences and disorders at UCF, and I am the current president of Aphasia Family. Hi, my name is Steve O'Reilly. I am the current vice president at Aphasia Family. I'm also a communication sciences and disorders major. Hi, I'm Maylene Delvino. I'm also a communication sciences and disorders major. My name is Shai Gazga, and I served as the VP for Aphasia Family um, for my final semester at UCF. Hello, my name is Laura Rogers. I volunteered with Aphasia Family from August 2019 through July 2020. I've been volunteering with Aphasia Family since September 2018, which is actually the very first semester of our club. And I have been volunteering at Aphasia Family since September 2019, which was my first uh, semester at UCF as a freshman. I am a senior and I have been with Aphasia Family since September 2019 and I am a co-social media manager, uh, so I help Joe with our content. I joined my very first semester, which is when the Aphasia group started, and I am currently working as an SLPA um, in a pediatrics private clinic with kids with autism and other language disorders. I graduated from UCF in spring 2020 and I'm currently back home in Palm Beach County working as a registered behavior technician. My name is Amy Engelhoven. I am a lecturer and director at Aphasia House at the University of Central Florida. Aphasia House is a um, outpatient speech and language clinic for people with neurogenic communication disorders. And we do traditional um, outpatient speech therapy as well as intensive speech and language therapy where clients come in and get four hours of therapy a day, four days a week for six weeks at a time. We, we run five of those clinics um, per calendar year. Um, Aphasia Family was actually a spinoff of um, our Friday group therapy sessions that was called Friday Only Club that had been going on for about, I want to say about 10 years. It started before I started at UCF. And the Friday Only Club was intended to be a bridge program for people in traditional um, speech therapy that really had kind of needed to start, you know, thinking about living in the community and doing more functional things. Um, and so, um, that bridge program was highly successful and very, very popular with our people with aphasia. Um, but the problem was because of limited capacity, a lot of people weren't um, able to get off the bridge and we couldn't get new people in to experience that bridge program. So what I did in the summer of 
no, I'm sorry, in the, um, yeah, in the summer of 2018, um, we pulled <clears throat> the bulk of the people who were in Friday Only Club together and we formed some focus groups and sat them down three different times and asked them, if you could have a community group, what would you want it to look like? Um, what activities would you want to do? What, how, how would you find it to be fun and fulfilling? Um, and so we took the information from those focus groups and created Aphasia Family. And that particular group came up with the name, they came up with the mission statement, their value statement, they chose the logo, and um, they play a vital role in the activities that we select for them every semester. Um, you know, they, in one words, drive the bus in terms of what it is that the volunteers do to facilitate language rich activities for that particular group. Um, Aphasia Family is actually part underneath the umbrella of the UCF Adaptive Community. The UCF Adaptive Community was created several years ago by Dr. Megan Sherrod and Dr. Janet Whiteside, who is the founder of Aphasia House. And um, the intention of the UCF Adaptive Community was to invite anyone with a neurogenic communication disorder or other type of acquired neurological disorder, such as a traumatic brain injury or a, a spinal cord injury to participate in a three-tiered program. And that three tiers included adaptive sports, um, choir, and theater. And um, so within that particular um, umbrella, UCF, um, the UCF adaptive community, aphasia family kind of fits within there. And so we were able to create a registered student organization uh, using the UCF adaptive community so that we could invite volunteers from all different uh, majors across the UCF campus to experience what it's like to um, hang out and facilitate language rich activities for people with um, aphasia, but also with other communication disorders associated with a neurological event. And so we, we do have mostly people with aphasia in aphasia family, um, but we do have a, a gentleman with dysarthria, which is a speech disorder, which is not specific to language. And then we also um, in the past have had a woman with um, dementia in our group as well. And so um, we invite anyone with a, neuro, with a communication and acquired communication disorder to participate in our group. Uh, having been in tours, um, having been in the, the church, I understand the people get whipped, whipped in is going through the motion. Till January wine acts, January wine kind acts. That people did. All right, Sharon, go right ahead. As I want to end my story on a positive note, I'll share with you the negative, not not nuances. Nuances. Thank you. You're welcome. My TBI first. They, the medical staff, made me feel invisible. The first thing I remember when I was in the coma was being taken to get an MRI. Feel a feeling and can be, be seen, <clears throat> be seen, no. Uh, yes. okay. Positive. Positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, 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 negative, negative, if mm -hmm. this person read my choice to recover. Good, Good job, job, Jenny. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So as the president of Aphasia Family, I'm responsible for recruiting and monitoring our volunteers, helping create monthly calendars with our weekly activities, um, communicating with the Office of Student Involvement and SGA, as well as leading meetings and facilitating activities weekly. Um, one of my major responsibilities is to help the volunteers as they uh, create 
activities for our members to engage in every week. So collaborating with the volunteers and communicating to them what activities need to be created. And I um, help assist Caitlin, the president, in anything that she needs help with or could use additional support in. For my office of position, I kind of help with the logistics, you know, um, with activities and facilitating activities and helping with our volunteers. But for the social media aspect of the officer position, um, I do posts on our Instagram and our Facebook, and I also help create graphics for our um, social media as well. So my initial thoughts and feelings before joining Aphasia Family was I was completely nervous because I have never experienced um, working with individuals, um, which are extraordinary, by the way. I've done, you know, my fair share of volunteering before, but it's a new group of people, uh, tons of different personalities, and I didn't really know what to expect. So I was super excited, but nervous at the same time because I have always volunteered with kids. So I knew this experience would be different, but I was excited to meet these people and be such a part of such a loving and fun community. Yeah, so I actually had a friend um, that she was a part of aphasia family last semester. So I would always hear her talking about it and she would talk about going, but I never really knew exactly what she did there. Um, so I didn't have too many expectations just because she had never told me stories. I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I had heard of aphasia because of the neuroscience class under um, communication science and disorders, but I kind of had a very textbook definition of it. So I didn't know how, you know, therapy or like any kind of session for it would be applied. Um, I had some experience working with aphasia because my grandfather um, was, he had a stroke in 2013 and he suffers from aphasia. And uh, with my workload, with my personal life, um, everything was so stressful. But I will say that for the first meeting, I was already laughing my butt off. All of the members are absolutely hilarious. And, you know, I think I thought maybe I was really, really nervous and I was like, well, I know they've been a part of the program for a while. So I guess I thought that they were going to be nervous. I didn't know how long they were part of the program for, but you know, they really, for me, really took away that nervousness. I was laughing. I was smiling. I felt very comfortable because everybody just seemed to really love the organization, love being there, get along really, really well. And I was like, wow, I, I want to be a part of that community. So it gave me an expectation of like a desire to belong to something that people were so happy to be a part of. And um, I enjoyed every second. In fact, it helped relieve the stress because just the fact of knowing that I was there, you know, and I, and I experienced the true growth of these members, you know, it, it grows on you. So this experience only made me appreciate and respect these members more. And, you know, the members and also all of the students that, uh, that are there, Dr. E, everybody's just like, everybody put me at ease. And I was just able to have fun with the first activity that I was uh, responsible for. And it was just great. And I wouldn't take it back. And I'm ready to do it again next semester and the one after that as well. Uh, so comparing it to my previous experience as well as my current ones, I think aphasia family kind of like parallels with um, what I do at Nemours Children's Hospital. On um, volunteering at elementary schools before, I've interned, I've um, worked at a summer camp, but I found through this experience that I've never really connected with people like this because you've met such People, you met people from such diverse, different backgrounds who all share a common thing and come together with such support and encouragement and love every single week. I think it's such an amazing organization as it offers meetings, which include a variety of educational games and activities to help improve the members' communication and reading skills. So it's really fun seeing that, you know, some seeing the different kinds of aphasia too. That was a cool thing to see just because you 
at least for me with aphasia, I always thought just like, oh, either they like can't talk, but they can process it, or they can process it, but like not speak it, or like vice versa kind of thing. But there are like different like variations. So seeing different patients have that was very interesting because some were just really good in articulating, but took them a little bit, or they had a stutter. Um, but just like seeing them too, um, their past careers and talking about their past lives was just very enriching to me. And I also feel like I get that at Nemours as well because these children have gone through so much and just hearing about their life stories sometimes because you know they just want to vent to someone and I feel like being able to offer them a listening ear even if you know we're not medical professionals or have any training of that sort um, is really you know great for me also just great for them just we're able to help each other in that way and it was such a beautiful thing to see not only to be a part of, but to just witness every week. Um, and I'll, I'll give an example. Um, one time a member was reading and they kept stumbling on a word. And another member very, very softly just said, you got it. And it was just such a nice moment to see. It made me realize the importance of not only aphasia family, but a community of people who suffer from communication disorders that they could come together like this every week and just support each other. Aphasia family is like a family. All the volunteers and officers are so welcoming and friendly and they create such a warm and positive environment for the volunteers and this organization definitely fits the name aphasia family compared to other organizations that I've um, been a part of. From the very first meeting that we had, um, I was blown away. I remember afterwards, we I hung up the Zoom call and I went to my sister's room and I was like, oh my gosh, that was the most incredible thing I've ever experienced. I kind of got a new outlook and perspective, but to be honest, um, I've really enjoyed um, learning about aphasia and people with aphasia. And I've watched many videos videos on um, people that have had strokes and then have aphasia as a result. I did gain a new perspective after volunteering on aphasia family this past semester as I realized the beneficial impact this organization has on the members through volunteering and facilitating educational games, reading activities. Um, it can help improve their communication and spoken language. And I just think it's very interesting, you know, having been involved in this program that you know, the one, there was one particular video that I watched, um, this girl named Lauren, she was involved in a car accident. Um, she was hit by a drunk driver and she had a stroke. Um, and she actually, I'm sorry, it was a TBI and then she also had a stroke while she was in the hospital. And, you know, she made a video where she's like, hi, my name is Lauren. And then she continues on in the video where she says, some people think that I'm not necessarily stupid, but some people don't think that I'm as smart as they are um, because of you know my aphasia or because of the language difficulties and communication difficulties that I have. And I thought that was a really inspiring video. And now even more so with being an aphasia family. I couldn't, I just like, the joy and like the happiness that radiated out of my screen. I laughed so hard that my cheeks were hurting after that session. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is incredible. Like I couldn't believe, not that I didn't expect to have fun, but I didn't expect to have that much fun. And I just told myself, I was like, oh my God, I mean, they're hilarious. Like the dynamic is just so funny and, and fun. And like the riddles were that we did, I remember, that day I had riddles as an activity and the way they were just jumping on it and all the other activities, I mean, everything was just so easy flow, easy go. It's really important to offer support for those with aphasia. And I think aphasia family is also such an amazing organization for raising awareness for aphasia and educating its volunteers and members. I really enjoyed becoming involved and volunteering with the members as this, as this was my first semester with aphasia family. It just further proves the point Something's happened to, to these individuals and no matter what, they strive to do their best every single day. And living with aphasia is something that's, you know, that can be seen as difficult. But I think I just see their dedication and their passion towards, you know, what their normal was before 
and they're working so, so hard to get to that original point. And so I just think it's really inspiring and I've just been inspired by this entire experience, to be honest. And I just told my sister, I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. And I remember telling her, I was like, I feel so like called, if you will, to go into the stroke area of communication sciences and disorders, because I mean, that was just like, that was incredible. <laughs> I remember being very interested in aphasia in um, whenever it was discussed in any uh, coursework class. I just had a particular affinity for it. And then actually getting to interact um, with people that had aphasia, that was like, just the best. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Wait, it's all right. Well, um, yes. Um, Aman. Um, uh, Aman. Um, 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 um. Me? Yes. Um, I can start. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I start. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm Alma Lariola. And from Wind, Windermere, Florida. Uh, is Ginny, um, Ginny Longwood, Florida, mm -hmm. May 2007. Stroke. That's when you had your stroke. Yes, a stroke, yes. <clears throat> um, I, Annette, I had my stroke in April. 10th, 2004. Hi. <laughs> Sal, uh, do you want to go? Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, got it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm Sal Troiano. Uh, had my stroke seven years ago. Uh, I'm living at Kissimmee now. Sharon. Sharon. <laughs> yep. Hi. My name is Sharon Pearson, and I had my stroke um, on Thanksgiving 2019, mm -hmm. so um, almost one year ago. Yep. 